ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما after praising Allah Azza wa Jalla and testifying that no one is worthy of our worship and our devotion but Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was His servant and His Prophet and His Messenger, and after reminding myself and you with the taqwa of Allah to be dutiful and cognizant of Him, Jalla Jalalu, as best as one can, and after welcoming my brothers and sisters to the house of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Two weeks ago, a very heartwarming story took place here in the masjid at Jumu'ah. And that is that on my way in to deliver the khutbah, a few boxes of raw meat were placed outside and a brother told me these were left by someone in the community, who I still don't know who it was, uh, to give out to the people. And this is aqiqa meat, meat as a result of him slaughtering, you know, on behalf of his newborn that he just received. And so I said, yes, aqiqa meat can be distributed to anyone. You don't have to qualify. It is not just charity. It is open for, to be gifted as well. Give it out to whoever wants. And I entered and I gave the khutbah. And then I, the second khutbah came around. I gave the second khutbah. And then on the way out, uh, a good brother came to me and said, what do we do with all this charity meat? As soon as I entered the first khutbah, someone took it and put it in the fridge, assuming it was a donation for those in need. And so nobody received the meat. And so I said, oh, subhanAllah, this was supposed to be given out. Do you know anyone that would take it? He said, actually, I know people that need it. I know Syrian refugees in this community who would uh, be delighted and cannot afford meat like this. And so it was so beautiful and so heartwarming that this could have gone to anyone, but Allah Azza wa Jal had it happen in a way that it was reserved for those that needed it most. And it reminded me immediately of a story that still sticks with me. When I was a teenager in a masjid I grew up with, the mu'addin, we were making wudu in the masjid side by side, and he just kept saying to me, Allah is a razzaq, Allah is the true provider. And I turned to him like, yes, we know, we are Muslim. <laughs> what do you mean, what's behind this? Why are you so passionate about it right now? He said to me, a friend of mine from years ago called me out of the blue said to me, I'm transiting in New York from Canada and my flight to Egypt is tomorrow. So I went and I picked him up and he spent the night at my house. And so when I opened my refrigerator for him, I had a can of soda that came with an order of food that I made earlier in the day. There was a free can of soda. I don't drink soda. So I gave him the soda. And then it hit me that this man had to come from Canada to drink this can of soda because Allah wrote that this is his rizq. It's a very simple, you know, exchange, but it is true. It is so profound to realize, you know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوْعَدُونَ You know, there's a very famous passage in Surah al dhariyat when Allah says, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُوْقِنِينَ In this earth are so many signs for anyone that has certainty. If you want to be certain about anything, it's about God because there's more proofs on earth for God than anything else can be proven. Nothing is easier to prove because the earth is filled with proof if you're looking for proof, if you're looking for certainty in life. Then the next ayah says, even within yourselves, don't you see? Don't you see Allah's power within yourself? You are a drop of dirt, a drop of liquid, and you became this complex human being, and the human race is also so complex and so diverse, so much, right? The third verse is where I'm getting at here. Allah says, and also notice the power of God in the fact that he keeps your rizq in the skies. In the skies is your provisions and all that you've been promised. You know, some scholars say Allah is referring to the fact that it all begins with him. The rizq begins with the rain. The rain causes the vegetation to grow and everything follows. 
But it is not the rain as in the water, the H2O. It is the rain meaning Allah decrees out of this world that things come down into this world and life becomes possible. And the same thing will happen regarding what you've been promised. I mean, the same way we decree that rain come down so that vegetation will grow, we will also decree rain later to come down to regrow your bodies after you die and you will be brought forward on the day of judgment. But that idea, re recollecting, restoring that idea that rizq is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's divided up there. So don't go crazy trying to chase it down or trying to access it. Ultimately, it is always with Allah azza wa jal subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, that is why Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, they asked him how come wise people are usually poor? Because if you think about it, if it's in our hands, money, then the more intelligence you have, the more money you can make. It should follow, right? But Ali radiallahu an said, لِأَنَّ عَقْلَهُ مِنْ رِزْقِ because his mind was his rizq, meaning Allah divides things. He made this one smart and this one rich. It's not the smart person becomes rich or else it would have followed. But to prove to us that it's really divided somewhere else, it's really not hinging dependent on us, our rizq. It is true that Allah is the perpetual provider. At every moment, he's providing. To, to focus on that, especially now, because we are by Allah's grace, being eased out of, transitioning out of the COVID lockdown. And so many interruptions happen to our rizq in many ways during the COVID. You don't want to forget that. You want to remember it. You know, it's not even just like your paycheck got, you know, shaken up. People, some people, you know, got their paychecks and then they went and found the shelves in the stores empty. They couldn't use the paycheck for what they needed, right? That is why the early Muslims used to say that my best moments is when they tell me there is no more daqiq, no more flour in the house to bake with. He doesn't mean he likes to go hungry. He's saying there's one of my, you know, most, the greatest opportunities to restore my realization, my faith, that it is actually Allah who makes all this possible. He's the one that facilitates my arzaq. And so I can rely on him better once these things happen, when there's a hiccup in the supply chain, as they say. When things are going normal, you forget that so fast. And then relying on him the right way. That's why he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, in the other hadith, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ If you would just rely upon Allah the way he deserves to be relied on, unwavering reliance, he would provide for you the way he provides for the birds that set out every morning with empty stomachs, and then they return each night with their fill. You think about it, like who guides the flight of this bird? Who navigates for them to their location? It's a different place every time, different direction, different trajectory every day. It's not like I go and work at a computer station or at a cashier somewhere. It's not. It's totally random in a sense to us. You think about what sharpened the, the, the eyesight of this bird and its vision to be able to locate those little rodents. What is it that tightened the oxygen underground to force the worms up? That's why they come up in the rain also, right? At the right time for the bird to see it, to go get it. So the, the mechanics, the dynamics, the mechanisms in place are so complex. And these help us realize that it is Allah who provides for the birds. If we give it due thought. And once you rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal properly, or how do you know you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, you start pursuing your rizq in a beautiful way. Like when the Prophet ﷺ said, if you were to run from your rizq, the way you run from death, your rizq will still come to you the same way death comes to you. He said that ﷺ. The other hadith about beautifying it, he said that Jibreel ﷺ inspired, revealed within me the sacred truth, meaning so I can share it with you. That no soul will ever die without living its lifespan to the fullest and collecting its provisions, its rizq entirely. So what? What's the point? The hadith continues to say, Allah, So fear Allah, الطلب, and beautify your pursuit of your rizq, beautify your request. How do you beautify your request? First of all, you don't cut corners. You don't cut corners. You do not seek haram. 
And the hadith continues to actually say that. Don't be driven by your fear about your rizq and tatlubahu bi haram, that you seek it in haram ways, in unlawful ways. That's number one. Number two is that you actually pursue it. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, the Qur'an taught us, that whether you're Muslim or not Muslim, whether you're a believer or non-believer, you have to work. You have to respect Allah's cosmic order, the way He constructed the universe. you got to put in effort or else you're insulting His wisdom. Seek, plant, harvest. That's the way it works, no matter who you are. So that's a part of it. Part of it is respecting Allah's wisdom and His design of this universe and you actually work it. The bird actually left the, the branch, left the nest in the morning. You need to leave your nest. You need to work. To the point that the Prophet ﷺ even said that Dawood ﷺ, who was a prophet but he was a king, even Dawood ﷺ only ate from what his own hands earned because the best thing a person can eat, consume, is what you, do, what you earn with your own two hands. So you got to work. That's part of it. Part of beautifying your request, a third aspect is that when you do pursue now, when you do work hard, you don't panic. Because you're working hard with whatever Allah made available. While knowing ultimately, it's in the skies, right? It's not in my hands. It ultimately hinges on Allah Azza wa Jal. And the last aspect of pursuing beautifully after the break, inshaAllah, I will say this, and I thank Allah for you and for you. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله. So we are trying to engage, right, the reality of what rizq is about and Allah being al razzaq the ultimate provider is all about. It is about this realization that makes you rely on Him the right way, which makes you seek out your rizq in the most beautiful way, not seeking it through haram. Not sitting around and thinking that money grows on trees. And at the same time, not being frantic and impatient and, you know, filled with anxiety as you work hard. Because you're working as if it's in your hands, but you're certain that you're in Allah's hands. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth part now about beautifying your rizq is that you don't assume that your rizq is the rizq of the dunya only. Allah says about Jannah, this is our risk that doesn't end. This is a superior risk that you are obligated to chase harder than you chase the risk of this world. You know, Ibn Ata'illah, secondary, rahimahullah, he used to say, إِنَّ اجْتِهَادَكَ فِي مَا ضُمِنَ لَكَ وَتَقْصِيرَكَ فِي مَا طُلِبَ مِنْكَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى انْطِمَاسِ الْبَصِيرَةِ you working so hard in the things that are finalized, your, your, your span in this life, and you neglecting what was demanded of you to seek the next life, right? The akhirah. This is a sign that you're, you're blindfolded. You're spiritually blindfolded. Your heart is going blind. When you put the work in here, beautifully fine, but more beautifully than here, that's a humongous problem. And you have to ask yourself, do I fall into this? Some people, when it comes to the Akhirah, they're a long list of excuses. Pre-concocted you know, excuses, they're ready. When it comes to this world, it's sky's the limit, no excuses, you can do it, right? When it comes to the Akhirah, that's nowhere to be found. When it comes to praying, you give the leftovers of your day. You pile up the prayers. Or may Allah forbid you only pray Jumu'ah. But it, or when it comes to charity, you make sure you don't pull out of your pocket the amount except the, the very specific change, spare change that you... And then when it comes to Akhirah, you just, we make a, this cold request to give us the highest levels of Jannah and you keep it moving, right? Or you seek protection from the fire while thinking about your, you know, your dentist appointment or something. We, we have to work. And the last thing I want to say is the opportunities of Al-Akhirah are risk and of the greatest of them is Ramadan. Dare I say it, many of us, as w someone said, you know, are going to be so consumed chasing after shopping and filling our freezers and preparing the desserts and all of this stuff. I used to do that. And inshallah, I will not return to that phase in our life, right? And you prepare so much for the feast element of Ramadan when it was never meant to be a feast. 
But what's worse is that it happens at the expense of the fast. How much do you work hard and toil to prepare to make the best out of the fast? Realize the opportunity, the rizq of Ramadan, especially after a year when we have buried so many people. May Allah allow us to reach Ramadan, allow us to remain confident that he is a razzaq and know that the rizq of the akhirah is incomparable to the rizq of this dunya. And may Allah Azza wa give us the drive and the insight and remove the blindfolds from our heart to chase the akhirah in the most beautiful way while pursuing our rizq in this dunya in a beautiful, confident way. ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار واغفر اللهم للمؤمنين والمؤمنات وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله أكبر الله أكبر